Welcome to another Simple Engineering Snippet. In this instructional video, we will analyze a simple water distribution network. We will be setting up and using the flow equations and utilizing the linear method for the solution. I hope you find it informative. This is the simple network for the analysis. There are three pipes joined by three nodes. Nodes B and C have demands of 2.0 and 1.5 cubic meters per second as indicated. Conservation of mass indicates that the input to node A must be 3.5 cubic meters per second. Note that there is no fixed head provided for any of the nodes. This means that we will not be able to determine the actual head at any of the nodes. However, once we solve for the flows in each pipe, we can calculate the head loss in each pipe. Our goal will be to determine the flows in pipes 1 to 3. As stated, we will be using the linear method to solve the flow equations. There are alternative methods and they will be used in future instructional videos. The linear method is a robust method in that its ability to achieve a solution is not overly sensitive to the initial guesses for the unknowns. However, a disadvantage of the linear method is that it requires quite a few iterations to achieve a solution. We will need equations to calculate the head loss in a pipe. A general form that can be applied for a variety of methods is that the head loss, delta H, is equal to a coefficient, K, times the volumetric flow rate raised to the nth power. Two of the many possible different head loss correlations are shown, the Darcy Weisbach and the Hazen Williams correlations. This video will not go into depth on the origin or use of either of these equations, but how the coefficient K and the exponent N are defined from these correlations should be clear. In this network, only the major losses or losses due to friction in a straight run of pipe are analyzed. In this instructional video, we will be using the Hazen Williams correlation with the coefficient k values for each pipe provided. First, let's set up the flow equations. There are different approaches to define the necessary equations to solve a network. One approach is the so called head equations, where the head at each node are the unknowns. In the flow equation, the flows in each pipe are the unknowns. In this example, with the linear method, we will use the flow equations. The number of pipes in this example is three, so we will need three equations. In general, the flow equations are defined from the application of the energy equation for each independent loop in the network, including pseudo-loops, and by applying the continuity equation to each node. It is important that the equations are independent. In other words, no equation can be derived from a linear combination of the other equations. In this network, there is a single loop, no pseudo loops, and three nodes. We only need three equations, so we will only be using equations for two of the nodes. Let's start with defining the loop. In this example, the loop is obvious. The three pipes form a hydraulic loop. We pick a direction for the loop. In this case, we choose the clockwise direction which assumes the flow in pipe 1 to be from node A to B, pipe 2, B to C, and pipe 3, C to A. It is important to be consistent with these assumed flow directions when writing down the equations. They are likely not all correct, which will be evident if the answer for a pipe flow comes out negative. Now let's write down the energy equation for the loop. Since it is a hydraulic loop, the total change in head around the loop is zero. The energy equation for the loop is defined using the general form of the head loss equation covered previously for each pipe along with the provided data. Now let's apply continuity for each node, starting with the nodes that have specified demands. We must use the already assumed flow direction to define the flows into and out of the nodes. For node B, we get that Q1 minus Q2 is equal to 2.0. For node C, we get that Q2 minus Q3 is equal to 1.5. Node A clearly must have a supply of 3.5, and we can write down that equation. We now have three nodes and one energy loop equation for three unknowns. Clearly, that is a problem. On careful inspection, we can see that the continuity equation for node A is a linear combination of the equations for node B and C. It is not linear independent, and we will not be using that equation. The three equations we will solve to determine the three unknown flows are summarized here. We will be solving these equations using the linear method 
but these same equations can be solved using other methods. As the name linear method implies, we want to solve linear equations. The continuity equation is already linear. The energy equation has flowed to the 1.85 power, which is clearly nonlinear. The basis for the linear method is to solve the problem with iteration. Each flow that is raised to the 1.85 power in this example is broken down into the product of two flows as indicated. The known result from the previous iteration is raised to the 0.85 power. The unknown flow for the current iteration is raised to the power of 1. It is linear in the unknown. Note the use of the absolute value signs. This ensures that a negative sign, which indicates that flows in the opposite direction to the assumed direction, is accounted for properly. Now let's set up the linear system in matrix form using the provided data for the pipes. There are many ways to solve linear systems, but that is not the topic of this instructional video. The solution process is illustrated here. We start with an initial guess for the flows, calculate the coefficients for the energy equation, and then solve for the unknown flows. We iterate until we achieve the desired convergence criteria. We will skip the calculation details, but here are the results using an initial guess of 1 cubic meters per second for each pipe. The final answer is shown. Clearly the assumed direction for the flows in pipes 2 and 3 were incorrect. Before we move on, we should note that it took quite a lot of iterations to achieve the desired convergence. It is also evident that the desired convergence criteria was not overly restrictive, since the incoming flow to node B adds up to 1.99 instead of 2.0. Similarly, the flow entering node C is 1.55, but we have 1.55 leaving. A typical trait of using the linear method is that the solutions tend to oscillate, which is evident for the first 10 to 15 iterations. There are alternatives that converge faster, but one of the advantages of the linear method is that its ability to achieve a solution is not overly sensitive to the initial guesses. It is a robust method. There are some modifications to the linear method that results in the best of both worlds, fast and robust convergence. These options and alternatives will be covered in future instructional videos. Last, let's update the network so the flows are shown in the correct directions. I hope you found this instructional video useful. If so, then please like and subscribe. Thanks, and have a great day.